It's a desolate place, remote and abandoned, but once was bustling with nearly 7,000 Japanese and Japanese Americans forced to live in southeastern Colorado during World War II. It's called Amache and was one of 10 war relocation centers created by the U.S. government following the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Today, it's still isolated. But if you look closely, you'll find Bonnie Clark and her field crew hard at work. Are you, are you about down on this level, Greg? Yeah. The University of Denver archaeologist is leading a four-week field school at the site. So here you can see just a little bit of that, the edge of that concrete, where it comes around. And, but from the top, what it really looks like is basalt, which is a kind of landscaping material that people in California would have been familiar with. And we're seeing a lot of that where people are taking what's here and using it in ways that make it seem more familiar. Clark and her crew are uncovering artifacts left behind more than 60 years ago. Items that give them clues about the people who lived here. We know from this block is that a lot of people in this block were from Los Angeles. And uh, a man who was a teenager in this block talked about how theirs was kind of the party block. And... Um, that there were a lot of uh, waitresses from Los Angeles who were sort of very worldly women and they smoked cigarettes and they drank. And so we had heard these stories and then we came across this and last night the light was just right and I said, that is red fingernail polish coming right out of the ground right here in this place where our oral history said this was a lo one of the places that they used to, you know, spin, basically come out and play records and um, have a good time at night. And then actually the sound from here, because they're kind of up on this hill, would waft down to the rest of the um, camp. And so they got a little bit of a reputation um, for uh, having a good time up here in Block 9L. They're also finding remnants of very well-designed gardens. Um, you know, I think that speaks to a whole lot to, again, the ways of making, making a, a bad situation better and the importance of that to the people uh, who were here. Gary Ono was three years old when he and his family were told to board a train for Amache. Today, he is here voluntarily. He and his grandson, Dante, are helping Dr. Clark on the dig. I think it's wonderful. I think this part of history, American history, should be preserved. And uh, we should be able to tell the story as well as we can. Gary and Dante work alongside Clark and her students, digging sifting, even finding ties to their own family history. And here is my father's signature, Sam. And unfortunately, part of this got chipped away. But I believe in here is his M, middle initial for Masami, and Ono, O, and O, and he does a swirl. It's a rewarding experience for Clark and her students. I think this is an absolutely unique site. A lot of archaeology, there's no one around who can talk to you about it anymore. And it's very rarely that you actually have people on your site who live there and can give you not this firsthand experience and knowledge. Okay, this is going to be our final shot. It's feature 5318. April Camp Whitaker is getting her master's at DU in anthropology. She and the other students are learning how to survey the land, excavate the site, clean artifacts, and set up a museum. It's given Gary and Dante a respect for archaeology. We can really uh, appreciate archaeology uh, more so just from this experience. So from now on, whenever I read about discovery of this and that and, and so on, I, I, I would do so with total respect. And the experience has given the field crew a great respect for the Japanese Americans who once lived here. They put a ton of work into what everybody hoped was a very temporary situation.